Hi, and welcome to Rule of Carnage, uh, where myself, Glenn Ford, a games developer and designer, chats with this guy, Mike Hutchinson, also a game designer and developer. Um, one of the games which we have designed and developed um, with him designing and me developing together is uh, A Billion Sons, which came out fairly recently from uh, Osprey Blue Books. But what has come out very, very recently is uh, this fella, uh, A Billion Sons Warzone. Um, so we're going to have a little chat about that today. Nice. Mike. Sounds good. <laughs> yeah. Um, so for those who aren't familiar with A Billion Sons, it's um, a deep space uh, spaceship skirmish and fleet battle game. Um, but it's based around a, a sort of a, a contract system. So each game of A Billion Suns you play, you uh, select out a set of contracts that will tell you um, how you're negotiating the, uh, the, the area of space that your ships are for this uh, particular encounter. Now, it was always the intention that the uh, set of contracts and the way of playing those contracts in the in the main book were to be the the, the, the core um, systems set, and that there would be an option to sort of slot in some slightly different um, sets of contracts for di different ways of playing a game. And mm. Warzone is the first of what is hopefully going to be uh, more than one set of contracts. Um, so, Mike, do you want to talk a little bit about what the sort of ethos behind Warzone contracts as opposed to the core contracts is. And then we're probably going to have a little chat about some of the difficulties of designing the Warzone contracts and some of the things that we did to come over, overcome those difficulties and, and hopefully uh, sort of talk through some design bits and pieces that people can apply to their own uh, games and processes. Yeah, that sounds like an itinerary. So I shall launch right into the beginnings of that, which is uh, Warzone takes uh, the rule system, the mechanics of A Billion Suns, and instead of telling stories of a uh, frugal inner system uh, mining and, uh, uh, and pseudo-civilian uh, operations of recovering things and rescuing people and snaffling scientists and chasing down spies, and it transplants it uh, into the heartland of a... Yeah, interstellar corporate war uh, with massive battleships uh, duking it out. Now, you might think, hang on a minute, that sounds like a normal war game. Why is this a magical expansion? Um, and I suppose I'll tackle that one straight up, which is, um, as I was developing A Billion Suns, as we talked about before, like this image of like a massive Star Destroyer uh, hyperspacing into uh, the middle of the action was really like one of my core go-to uh, visual images. And that led to this funky jump point and jump um, phase sort of deployment system where every turn you get to deploy stuff in. And that like led to this beautiful flower opening of all kinds of different stories that you could tell using that and became really interested in the sort of uh, almost like the kind of Warcraft 2 sort of uh, real-time strategy interaction between like little worker bees and big mamas that were protecting it. And that's what led to the core systems contract. And all the time I was writing that, I was also messing about with blowing people up uh, game modes. And I guess two things were true. One is Offspray Blue Books have a very restrictive page count and you can't put everything you'd like into an Offspray Blue Book, which is great. That means you can release supplements uh, later on. But the other thing is I could have put the mass battle fleet punching each other out of space uh, game mode in the core book and then maybe come back and, and introduced the slightly more deranged Warcraft 2 version. But do you know what? I didn't want people to think of it as a normal spaceship game and then look at the core systems contracts and go, well, those are a bit weird. I'm not sure I want to play those. I wanted to give them the game that I wanted them to play, which was the core systems version with all of its bizarreness and weirdness. And then later say, thank you for staying with me with that bizarre journey. Here are the knocking six kinds of snot out of each other contracts. I mean, you know, personally, and this is genuinely just my personal take on, on it, I really think that the game shines at its brightest when it is telling those odd sort of multi-layered stories that the core systems tell. 
I mean, you know, I, I like Warzone and I think it, if you want to get a, a, a walking great big wedge of chips onto the table and absolutely blatter each other, um, you know, in, 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 within the system, it's great for that. But my heart is always going to be with these, um, the games where you've got a recon ship sort of blockade running through the laser fields and picking up a, a, a little scientist from a, from a dying facility and, and scramming out to the, to the nearest jump gate. And I think that's always, to my mind, that was always the, the thing to show people to go, you know, look, yes, this this can do huge fleet battles, but there's a lot of systems that can do huge fleet battles. There's not a lot of systems that can tell this story of, you know, rescuing Princess Leia, you know, in a, in a in a tiny little passenger ship, and and then getting out before the the star destroyers come in and, and obliterate the entire, um, you know, the entire area. That's the thing I think that that Billion Sun sort of does super interestingly and uniquely. Yeah, and um, I think that like telling stories like that is where this sort of war zone thing then grew from. So I knew that I wanted to be able to give people an opportunity to play bigger games. But um, uh, like where I first went to was writing probably like 30 different uh, like missions that would become the actual contracts. And over lots and lots of iterations got down to the eight that are in the war zone expansion now, including things like you know, there's a planet and you have to send carriers there and you have to drop troops onto uh, onto the invading, like so that you're like doing ground actions, but, you know, launching them from space or, um, you know, having uh, having a situation where there are like there's the border beacons that are flashing like in uh, fifth element and you have to go and like destroy those or capture them in order to uh, claim more of your territory so i do want to tell the kind of stories that i love from uh, the big spaceship movies that i enjoy so much um but the core like mechanical challenge to solve which i think we'll probably spend a bit of time talking about is um the game Billion Suns at its heart in core service uh, in in the core um, systems camp uh, contracts says you can buy anything you want you can spend as much money as you like on as many ships as you want but you probably shouldn't because every spend every penny you spend you have to make back um, as part of your your frugal uh, operations and so that limits your appetite for deploying. <laughs> massive battle groups of massive ships so that was the first thing to sort of stand on its head um and almost like initially just trying things out like okay here's all of your money you have to spend it on an army list which is how most games work didn't like that so like here's all of this money if you don't spend it you don't get that budget for the next game because it's like roadworks and local government uh, you have to spend it if you want it next game. That was okay, but it wasn't exactly right. Um, and then uh, Glenn hit on this idea of um, sort of uh, tokens, which are now called uh, war bonds, where you get uh, a number of these like sort of 50 credit uh, wads of cash. And the game will give you as many wads of cash as the, as the scale of the game. Uh, if you don't know Billion Suns, it's the thing that scales the size of the game. And then every time you cash in one of these war bonds, you have to spend all of that stuff by the end of the turn, otherwise it's lost. So you, um, uh, you, you crack through these war bonds, and as soon as you open one, you have to like spend hard and not be, not be frugal because you've got 50 credits and you, know, you need to build, bring in a couple of carriers or a battleship and some, some stuff and, and just crack on with it. And then the mm -hmm. other thing, which was... Um, took a lot of iterations to get to is sadly driving a wedge back through one of the things that a billion sons did with the core service uh, core systems contract i keep saying that wrong um where victory points and army points are the same uh, resource and so in order to make a thing work where you were allowed to just bring as many spaceships as you wanted uh sadly i had to snap that in half again i don't know that the other contract sets that I'm working on will do this. Uh, but for Warzone, it felt right that actually you spend, you spend, you spend, you spend, no one minds and you win victory points and you win victory points and that's how you win. Um, yeah, so those are two, I think those are some of the bigger challenges. 
Yeah, I mean, so again, to sort of track back for people who who aren't super aware of, of, of the system. So in A Billion Suns, you, you start the game with no ships and you have to go into debt in the core systems. This is you have to to go into debt to jump ships in but on the tabletop there's a set of jobs to achieve and each job pays you back some money and so you've got to figure out okay it'll cost me two credits to do that job and i'll get back six mm. i'm i'll be in profit and i'll and i'll be ahead and the other guy's got to try and undercut you or score bigger or kill you and stop you from doing what you're trying to do um so obviously the the original system of a billion sons is built to have this encouragement for you to be a little bit a little bit penny pinchy in the way that you sort of play the game you're, you're mm. counting the costs um and i think one of the big things about warzone is that it's not inherently a sort of massive fundamental change to the central systems it's a it's a change to the way that it allows you to think within the game because mm. Warzone essentially says, okay, here's a bunch of um of these bombs. And once you break the seal on them, if you buy like one one point reco recon ship out of that bond, you've now got to spend the remaining money. And that just instantly frees you up from this thing of where you're normally in, in a billion suns going, oh, okay, I've got to do the math of exactly how where I can pinpoint it in and do the jobs. In war zones, you suddenly go, I've got to spend 50 credits in a go. Wow, great. I'll have one of these big fellas and one of these these dudes and and, bam, 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 bam. and, and, there, and there are a couple of there are a couple of like extra things that hook into that in a really pleasing way in a Warzone game. So one is that you have the whole turn to spend those credits once you've cracked the war bond open. And initially you'll be like, wait, what? But then you'll remember that carriers exist. And in fact, Warzone makes more of a deal of carriers and introduces some new uh, sizes of carriers with different uh capabilities and special rules and so you can use uh those credits that you don't spend when you break the um the war bond in the jump phase when you would normally jump ships and you can spend them later um with your carriers so that's one thing that is quite um that's quite nice because it emphasizes carriers in a way that uh they're cool uh in some cases in the core systems contracts but they're not as universally useful as they are in um a, in a war zone at least not until you've realized that you can um get additional activations later in the turn uh even in core systems contracts but anyway and then another thing that hooks into that uh is the um <clears throat> the restriction that you have on the total number of battle groups that you can have in play and so this is in some regards a balancing factor for the prevalence of um uh, carriers in this game mode but it's also just a straight like quality of life restriction where it's quite easy it was quite easy in earlier playtest games to just introduce like just battle group after battle group after battle group particularly if you think about it you've got maybe um uh, a scale five game which gives you five of these 50 credit um uh war bonds that's a lot of recon ships. You don't own as many recon ships as you can buy using all of that money. And the point is that I don't want to incentivize that sort of behavior. So there's a simple rule that just says, you know, like the command and control mechanics of a military operation mean that you can only have scale plus three, which happens to be the same number of uh, uh, command tokens that you have to make it easy to remember. You can only have scale plus three uh, battle groups in play. So you've got to bring in big hefty stuff. Uh, you're limited in what you can deploy from carriers because you've got other stuff. Um, when things die, the tactical situation changes and open ups again. So if somebody alpha strikes, you've then got a, like a spot opens up for later in the turn to launch maybe some stealth bombers, which are a new uh, unit type, new ship class um, from your carriers. And so there's lots of uh, kind of new tactical challenges that that restriction interacts with. And of course, there's already the, uh, how many tokens do I have to jump units in so although I've got 250 credits and I'm welcome to spend them all like I don't have enough uh jump in tokens to be able to jump in a billion single um recon ships um so for the I guess um the the people who are a bit more familiar with a billion sons I'd hmm. say that there are 
there are probably two sort of obvious questions in relation to Warzone. The first I'd say is, so in A Billion Suns, games are based on a, a sort of a scaling mechanic, whereby if you choose to play a game that um, is, is of, say, scale eight, um, each of the contracts will then be worth significantly more points than if you're playing the game at scale, say, three. Yep. Um, so one of the obvious questions that people would, I, I guess, ask in relation to bringing out a set of Warzone contracts is, well, I could have just played a scale eight game. And in a scale eight game, I've got a, a whole wedge of points on the table and I can therefore afford to bring in all those bigger ships. Um, why, if I want to play uh, a, a game where I bring out a load of big ships, don't I just play a scale eight game? Why do I need a separate set of um, of contracts in order to sort of allow and encourage that? So, do you know, yeah. sort of... I guess like the 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 simplest answer to that is because um, the core systems uh, contracts will wag their finger at you, and the Warzone uh, contracts will slap you heartily on the back and hand you another foaming ale. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and it's, this is true. It's, I think there's a, there's a lot about player psychology, I think, uh, going on in these new contracts. And I, and I think if there is something for the sort of the more regular Rule of Carnage audience, you know, tuning in in relation to the designing of better miniature games, um, I would say that figuring out what sorts of things your game sort of shakes hands with your players for doing and what sorts of things it sort of slaps them around the chops for doing um, and how you're motivating their behaviors is very important for when you go in and tweak a few of these systems um, because the way that you you design your game and then that trains players to to play your game a certain way and that training can get very sort of deeply embedded in them and even if you do, and we've played sort of high scale a billion suns games, and even when you're playing the high scale a billion suns game, and you know there are in theory these points available, it's very hard to get out of that mindset of going, okay, I could put down one of those big ships. Oh, but they cost so much money, and I go into so much debt, and then I have to get it all back again. And I know I could, but I, I think I'd rather just eke out my resources a little bit and, and just get the, the, the smaller of the uh, of the of the bits of the contract. Um, and I think it's important that Warzone just goes, you know, yes, the mighty ships, they shall see your fury and glory. In the um, in the episode about uh, the victory imperative or whether winning matters, um, we talked a bit about how um, it, it is quite natural to want to know the victory conditions of a board game almost before any other rule. And that in some regards, quite often, although I don't often write in this way, it's good to start even a war game or a miniature game design with the end in mind and, and figure out the victory conditions. And I think, as I said before, like I began this process by writing a ton of uh, literal contracts, like the missions themselves, the, what was gonna generate revenue. And actually, I, I think that was, that was critical. Like all of the things, all of the rules that I added subsequently, the things about um, war bonds, the new carrier classes, like everything that I added to Warzone was in support of uh, a new victory imperative, like a new set of victory conditions. And I'll, I'll, I'll read you guys one just to sort of illustrate what I mean. So the King of Diamonds uh, generates you a contract called Break the Chain, which says several key exec executives are in the sector. They are priority targets, dismantle the chain of command. And in that mission, simply in the end phase of each turn, the CEO with the most mass ship three, uh, sorry, the most mass three ships in play gains a victory point. And if tied, no one scores. So the literal aim of the game is to have as many honking great ships on the board uh, mm. in order to get victory points. So that's just like a really simple and crisp example of like, OK, so I need to write contracts that reward you for putting big stuff on and pushing, you know, pushing the dial as far to 11 in terms of massive space battles. Um, and then everything else was like, OK, great. I've got lots of ships on the table. What's not fun about this in the Billion Sun system? How can I tweak it so that this experience is super exciting and I'm, I, is not bogged down by all these big big ships. Yeah, and I, and I think that is one of the things, again, about Warzone is that, it's, you know, at, at its base, the contracts within Warzone are much more concerned with the mass of the ships that you've put on the table. It's about sort of 
who can put their finger on the scale at the right point of the table mm -hmm. rather than in the core systems um they tend to be more concerned about can you get the uh the sort of the clockwork of your uh various wall um battle groups working together to achieve a certain job so you might have um in the core contracts you might have the the patrol contract where you need to scan uh, a ship to find out if they're smugglers and then you need to sort of uh, arrest them in order to get the points so you need to get it, try to get a recon ship in there followed up by a battle group and you want to try and do that before the other person can come in with a battle group to pick off the ship that you've done the hard work of scanning um and those are more sort of multi-stage story things about okay i need a little one of these and a little one of those and i want to coordinate them around where war zone contracts are a lot more concerned with can you keep the fattest weight of ships in the right spot on the table for longer than the other person um and i think that's one of the things that's interesting is if if you really wanted to you could take the war zone contracts themselves and play them without the other war zone rules mm -hmm. i i you know you you'd then ha have a sort of um a, a lot of math to do about sort of okay what ships can i afford and, and how can i manipulate them um and i think it'd be very hard to score uh in in profit but i don't think that that would that's not necessarily an issue within a billion sons because it's about beating the other person um it's just war zone helps you out playing those contracts a little bit um so the other thing that i was going to um sort of bring up as a question is that so one of the ideas i think behind war zone one of the sort of the parts of the ethos is it uh, of it is that a lot of people well people have come back saying okay i want to get out a big old battle fleet and chuck it onto the table and then batter away at my mate's big old battle fleet um you know a billion sons doesn't let me do that and war zones is a bit of sort of saying okay well now you can mm -hmm. and the obvious question i would say is okay well why doesn't war zone just say okay put x amount of points onto the table whoever has the most points left or or gets the least points destroyed at the end of the game has won the game um you know it, that it has these contracts in there that have to do with mass and 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 size of ships and therefore points of ships why isn't it just yeah you know what well, you've got 150 points put 150 points worth of stuff on the table then count up who's got the most ships left at the end and then you'll know who won um do you want to talk about why we didn't just go for a straight up you get the points that you kill uh sort of system for it because that is something that we've looked at more than once in designing a billion suns is, is the idea of rewarding people for blowing stuff up and we went to war zone that was one of the first things it's like well why don't we just reward people for blowing stuff up and then we'll have war zone that'll just mm. do it in a stroke but obviously we didn't and there's a good reason for that so do you want to yeah well i mean one one of one of the reasons for that is uh the calculus required um to figure out uh, what's going on in a game as you as you blow things up but I guess more than anything for me um, I wanted to continue the thing that Billion Sons does which is it unfolds stories on the table and so it was important for me that the contracts look and feel the same way that they do for core systems in a way simply because that's a cool way of telling stories like things unfold on the table and uh you know in some regards like like one of the versions of the contracts that i wrote was just like a simple objectives system where like you know like if you play in warhammer 40,000, where you just got some uh objectives and you need to get the right kind of troops and kind of gather around that and in some regards like some of the missions are very much still got that in their heritage. So instead of it just being go and blow people up, um, you uh, you go and take things. But the point really underneath it all is I'm sitting there at the beginning of the game with nothing on the table. You're sitting there at the beginning of the game with nothing on the table. Each time I bring something on, I'm potentially giving you some victory points. So do I bring anything on? And that is not a question that you want players to be wondering about during a game that's supposed to be about smashing seven bells out of each other um, yeah. 
yeah, I think sort of, you know, inherently me mechanically, right back when we were designing A Billion Suns, we, we ran into this thing where in A Billion Suns, once you put a ship on the table, you've gone into debt. And if the other person gets points for then destroying that ship, you end up in, in ironically, a sort of vicious debt cycle. And it's, it's almost like a real world situation where you borrow money at too much of an interest and then you have to borrow more money to pay it back. And it, it, there was a point um, in various iterations of A Billion Sons where if the other person got sort of one ship ahead of you in the jump in sort of uh, escalation uh, cycle and one jump ahead of you, you you were just done because whatever you jumped in they just jumped in something bigger and they destroyed what you had jumped in and and it all sort of cascaded down and rewarding people for destroying ships then just sort of exacerbated that that problem that cycle um and then i think when we came to warzone you like like you say the whole ethos of warzone is get out as many toys as you possibly can weigh the table down with the the gargantuan nature of your battle fleet and if the game says every point you put on the table is a potential point for your opponent to pick up and the whole point of it is to encourage people to get out the biggest pointiest chips they possibly can um you know you had to so horribly like overprice the contracts at that point to encourage people to put anything on the table if you if you rewarded them for destroying stuff it just became sort of obscene that these contracts were just throwing out deranged amounts of points and then it and it rebalanced back over again where whoever just got on the first ship took the first um bit of the first contract was therefore so far ahead that it's like every pip of every contract ends up become worth becoming worth so many points that one pip basically wins the whole game. And it was just essentially the first put the first pull won the game. And so that rebroke the system. And so yeah, any attempt to basically every time we've gone in and made any attempt on any system to give you points for blowing up somebody else's ship, it's instantly sort of cascade broke every part of a billion suns. And, like, and you wind up you wonder now why there are books like virtual economics, <laughs> uh, virtual economies uh, on my bookshelf. <laughs> yes yeah yes yes as soon as you pay somebody for blowing up a ship in a billion suns it's like having a, a an elephant step on an egg carton it's it's it, in many ways it's surprising how instantly it crushes the system doing that and how yeah. how, how sort of pervasively it does it as well it sort of breaks every part of the game like so, like a sort of virus spreading across uh yeah uh, across it's it's box. it's like if you had gas lands and you took gas lands and you said you know what we should do is we should reward people for driving fast and every time we tried to do that like all of the cars on the table just exploded and all the wheels fell off it would be like that i just don't understand why it doesn't work but it definitely it, it explosively and viciously doesn't work when you reward people <laughs> for blowing up spaceships yeah you? Which, yeah you you really would Think and 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 it's one of these. It's an interesting thing about sort of developing a game and putting it out there. Is it's so obviously true that you should just get points for blowing up other people's stuff that a number of people, well-meaning and helpful people, have just rolled in and gone, "Well, just give people points for blowing blowing stuff up." That, that have to be like, oh, actually, uh, actually, we <laughs> protested that, and uh, actually, you have fun finding out why that's an abomination. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it's you know it's like it, it's yeah it's, it's it has it, people sort of um, advise from their perspective and they sort of say okay this is the thing and people are great at telling you what's wrong with the game but uh, you know it's been said several times they're not always great at telling you the solutions and certainly if you've probably play tested and worked through your game a lot of people come in with you know and people come in with my first thought of how to fix the game. Uh, you know and and it's not because i'm smarter and more brilliant than them it's just that i had that thought six months ago and then went through the horrifying pain of play testing it for x many months and going oh this game is horrible now <laughs> this is a horrible experience i should never ever do this ever again um you know that not everybody has put themselves through that that unpleasantness in in working through their game okie dokie that's been a, a splendid uh, little conversation about um, this 
excellent supplement to the excellent game of Billion Suns, Warzone. So Warzone is a free to download um, PDF. Well, I think it's uh, it's pay what you want currently. It's on. it's, uh, it's fill my it's fill my coffee mug is what it costs. <laughs> So you're you're so, you're very very welcome to it. I want you to have it and to play a billion suns with it. Uh, if you are uh, feeling flush, then drop a drop a silver penny in the coffer. Yes, and and see if Mike spends it on coffee. Um, uh, yes. So a billion suns. What sort of implication so, uh, is that? <laughs> a billion suns war zone is available to download for free um, from uh, a billion uh, a billion suns space. Yes, um, you will need the Billion Suns rulebook to play it, but that's a very inexpensive purchase that I recommend you make immediately. Yes, yes. If if you do download Warzone without the Billion Suns rulebook, then something has gone badly awry within the the, the, the chaining system of, of decisions that you made in that process. But Warzone is available right now to download and check out. You can pay for it if you want to, or you can just have it for free. Uh, it'll allow you to get every spaceship that you own and some extra ones that you'll have to acquire and stick them all onto a tabletop and have some rollicking good fun blowing each other up in a much more free and efficient manner than you could possibly achieve with the base of billion sons rule book um, and keep an eye out for um hopefully future and ongoing um elements within the a billion sons contract system um, but for now, um, if you've watched this video to this point, please do um, like and subscribe on the YouTube channel. Um, if you have opinions about Warzone, if you've got opinions about Billion Suns generally, if you have opinions about what sorts of other contract sets you would like to see us investigate and what other sorts of stories you think that it'd be cool to have a Billion Suns tell, please drop a comment um, below. We are always happy to hear extra ideas and we are, of course, tinkering and fiddling and fudging around behind the scenes with all these bits and pieces. So, um, you know, you might well see one of your ideas pop up if it's a good one. Um, but either way, I think uh, look us up on social media and we'll say goodbye from this episode of Rule of Carnage. So, bye-bye. Have fun blowing up spaceships. Bye-bye.